Hi, my name is Larissa Fassler and I'm a visual artist based in Berlin, Germany, originally from Canada. Um, today I'm going to talk about my practice and I'm going to specifically focus on my work that deals with my relationship to the city of Paris. As I said, I'm based in Berlin. I've been living here now for 20 years. And for the past 15 years, I've been uh, developing an art practice that um, looks at the built environment of cities, specifically urban public space, uh, in an attempt to understand how public space affects users and inhabitants. And I, I borrow tools from urban anthropology, urban sociology, urban planning, architecture, model making. Um, and through sort of stealing from all these dis different disciplines, I've also developed my own uh, subjective systems based on my own body. So I will choose a site in the city and then I'll commit to it over a, an extended period of time, weeks or even months. So for example, the Garden or in Paris. And I'll go there every day for at least one hour, sometimes up to six hours every day. And in that case, I was there for three months uh, at different times of day. And during that process, I will walk every inch of it. I'll walk down corridors, I'll walk uh, up escalators or down escalators, elevator shafts, stairwells, and I'm gonna try to find every accessible space and, and map it in a small sketchbook. Again, um, I, I measure and map by walking and counting my own footsteps. So it's, it's systems based on the body. I then in another additional notebook will also be recording who's using the space, uh, noting their age, um, observable race, their gender, uh, what people are wearing, saris, chadors, drop crotch, pants, uh, sunglasses, headphones, whatever. Uh, I'll record what people are doing, asking for money, um, sleeping, uh, waiting for trains, snapping fingers, hugging. I'll record sounds and smells. And I do this, um, again, as I said, over periods, extended periods of time. And then I take all of this information back into the studio and transform it into painting, drawing or sculpture. The kinds of sites I'm interested in cities are those that have a certain kind of social tension or are spaces that are contested or are spaces that also represent a society more generally. So again, for the Gardenor, that site speaks of access to the city and mobility, equality of who has access. It's a site that also speaks very much about race. It's also a site that speaks about uh, security and control. And it's equally a site that speaks about poverty and uh, destitution. So that's sort of a site that I will glue on to and map in order to also speak about France more generally. When Katrine Vadar from the Canadian Cultural Center asked me to write a short abstract for this talk, um, the abstract that I sent her, it was funny, she said it, it sounded quite personal and it didn't really work as an abstract for the talk, but she encouraged me to, to read it uh, today um, because I thought it's an interesting introduction into my kind of relationship with Paris. So I'm just gonna give it a read. Although I live in Berlin, Germany, I have had a long on-again, off-again relationship with Paris for years. Fascinating and complicated, Paris challenges me to think about urban public space and its connection to shaping our societies. Paris stuns me with her beauty, confuses me with her contradictions. She arouses my curiosity. She provokes me to think about equality and mobility confronts me to think about race, identity, and what it means to live in a multicultural society. She frustrates and disappoints me with her neglect and her indifference to poverty, homelessness, and precariousness. But most of all, she inspires me to learn, think, and grow as an artist. Over the next perhaps 40 minutes, I will speak about specific sites in Paris, the Gare du Nord, Place de la Concorde, and noisy le sec places that have added to and changed the way I think about urban public space. So I'm going to move into showing you some images of work. And as, um, as the invitation from the Canadian Cultural Centre was posed, um, this is going to be more of a studio uh, visit where I'm going to be showing a lot of um, in process uh, and working method images.
So the Gardinor. Uh, this is the Gardinor in northern Paris, and it connects Paris to not only its northern suburbs, Saint-Denis uh, and beyond, but it also connects Paris to all northern European destinations. So it goes the Eurostar to London, but it also goes to Brussels, Amsterdam, um, and, a, and a number of sites in Germany. Uh, so it's a heavily used station for not only for local commuter traffic, but international traffic as well. It's uh, 700,000 people go through this station every day. Of course, we know these really romantic views of the station uh, from tourist guides, but also, of course, from art history. And I loved discovering these when I was on residency in 2014 in Paris. And it does sound cliche to be thinking about the um, impressionists when you're in Paris, but uh, it was interesting to see those paintings in a totally different light and to think about Paris in the 1850s when Hausmann is starting to do massive urban sort of regeneration and redesign, knocking down um, uh, ghettos, uh, the tight housing, creating these big vistas. Um, you have uh, train and mobility are starting to become much more of a factor and um, the, the society in Paris is changing. And so I love this idea that uh, the Impressionists were documenting the city around them and train stations also in order to speak about society more generally. This is uh, Pont de l'Europe. It's the, it's the uh, bridges that are going over the train tracks behind the station. And I love this painting because it's also speaking about sort of the social changes that are happening in the city where you've got a man in uh, workers garb and it's sort of the suggestion that now uh, lower class uh, workers are uh, uh, and people are also starting to share space with these sort of more people from the gentry and the, and the bourgeoisie and how social tensions um, are, are occurring in, in uh, public space. And then also uh, Manet again at this big puff of vapor in the background representing sort of modernity and the changing city and then these two figures which could be uh, seen to be a mother and child, but then when you read about the painting further, it's actually uh, probably a nanny. And again, sort of suggesting how uh, women's role is starting to change as, as young women from the countryside are coming into Paris to work and how there's a, there's a change in who fits into what um, class because she is wearing a lot of the symbols and signifiers from a higher class, the, the little dog, the fan, the lace, the book, um, and that it wouldn't have been clear from what class she comes in that that was causing tension. And so, so again, I was just fascinated by taking a site in the city in order to analyze uh, society more generally. This is the interior of the Gardenor. As I said, it's 700,000 people per day. Uh, security is tight, so you have the army walking through, you've got police, and you have orange-vested security guards um, that are in the station at all times. It's, uh, it's chaotic. These are the lower levels of the RER, the RER D and B that connect to the northern suburbs. And at, um, at rush hour, it's just manic down there with a number of people moving through the station. And of course, you have all the other issues around a train station. So the Gardenor sits in a rather uh, in the middle of a rather poor neighborhood. You've got uh, business people kind of uh, passing through the station quite quickly. As I said, the quite heavy hand of police and security. Lots of people just hanging out. A bit of a Roma Sinti community that circulate asking for money and with with petitions. These are the kind of sketches that I was do, doing daily as I'd go to the site. Uh, this is one of the underground metros where I would walk, redraw the platform, uh, note the different security cameras here uh, with the arrow in what angle they point, uh, make note of the signage, make some notes of, of times and what people are doing. This is a, another example where I've tried to figure out the super position of two floors, one on top of the other, and how the station kind of fits together. And I have hundreds and hundreds of these small maps and every piece of the station is drawn on a different piece of paper. I'd often go back and redraw the same piece of the station again and again and I love that the drawings were quite different and then later in the finished pieces I would project these two images and superimpose them on the same painting, sort of showing how my comprehension and understanding was different and shifting.
And again, another example of redrawing a same place again and again, this time also in this one on the left, noting how the police move across that bridge or the red or the different security guards in the, in the red vests. This was the final installation in 2016 at Gallery Jerome Poggi, where I took photos of the facade and one of the interiors. I printed them out on my home laser printer glue each of the A3 pages separately to the wall to build these big collages. And what I kind of loved was the contrast between the ideals in that architecture and the ideals of that facade and those female figures who in the Gardenoros cases are representing different cities. So Paris is at the top and then Berlin, Amsterdam, and it kind of goes down to all the northern cities. But the female figure is also so often used as this representative of nation and of values. And I love the contrast in those figures and the kind of reality that you find on the ground of security and inequality and, and all those various things. So the first painting deals with uh, security. I mapped every single camera in the station and in what angle it points. I also decided that I didn't want to offer the viewer an easy, understandable map, but rather it's uh, sort of what it feels like to be in the station. It's shifting, it's breaking, it's moving, it's hard to understand, it's, it repeats. There again, the rounds would be the round camera with its round view, and as I said, each angle of each camera. A second painting in this series um, got even more dramatic with how the station itself is sort of breaking and collapsing and falling out of the frame. And again, I, I kind of wanted to uh, provide that emotional experience to a shifting, chaotic, messy, uh, loud place. And on this written in, 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 in pen are all of the observations that I was collecting during those three months. And because they're kind of hard to read on the screen, I'm just going to read some of them for you. Two white girls sit on the ground on the bridge, bags, coins, water bottle, and books all over. Really strong smell of perfume, smell of piss in the wind. Police have taken someone into custody, a middle-aged white guy. Three officers, two men and a woman escort him to the station. Another young woman carrying a baby asking for money. Man roasting corn of cob in a shopping trolley. Black man in an electric wheelchair rolls by wearing a Superman t-shirt and a cape. Bicycle police stop and search action. They have stopped a dark-skinned man with a large beard, Bangladeshi perhaps, asking for his papers. Japanese girl with a suitcase wearing a surgical mask watches. Black man sitting on a railing watching cops. Black track pants, black leather t-shirt, gold rim glasses, gold watch. Tall white man in a white t-shirt staring at me. I dream about the gardener every night. A scrawny man with a mustache and a pink t-shirt and shorts asks me to please come with him. I understood him to be undercover security. Then I woke up. First elevator, totally filthy, ceiling of smashed glass. Bang, girl drops a suitcase. Three army men walk, large black guns. And it was interesting for me, this experience of trying to take notes and starting to write the race of the person that I was observing. And it, as it, it just felt uncomfortable to do that, but it was an interesting moment where I was writing, <clears throat> I started off writing man runs and man walks, but somehow that wasn't creating the visual of Gardenor, which is in a black space and absolutely connects to the black banlieue of Northern Paris. And that is a really important aspect of this train station that um, it is a major point for a community of color to enter the city. And those are those like security guards and cleaners and everyone else has to work way out of the city and travel in and that that trip into the city is often preceded by a bus ride or two bus rides. So it takes forever to get into the city and kind of, it raised for me those questions of um, access to the city and who has access and some of those structures. And also I was thinking of Paris often doesn't visualize itself as a black city. And so by trying to name the race of everyone who is in the city, in the train station, while I was describing, I was trying to create a, fuller visual picture. And that'll come up again in, in, a late, in later paintings. Here, just another uh, of the kind of messy uh, atmosphere I was trying to create. And, and this was another sort of point where I wanted to think about and talk about race in Paris was when I saw these, these are the SNCFs, 
kind of promotional material for how they are uh, renewing the station and the train station of the future. And if you look at the renderings, it's it's all white. Uh, there's one black person, but otherwise they've they've completely whitened the space. They've made it sort of more business and more neutral. Whereas the Gare du Nord, when you actually spend time in it, uh, is full of West African Dutch wax prints. People are wearing saris, people are wearing chador. You have this really kind of colorful, other uh, looking crowd who's moving through that station. Um, this is more what the, the Gare du Nord actually looks like. And so I was trying to find also a way in my language of painting to create a kind of different visualization of Gare du Nord. So again, this is my kind of uh, breaking uh, mapped train station with the notes. The orange represents kind of security hot zones where there were sort of moments of, of security control. And in the background, these big uh, flowers were taken directly from the Dutch wax prints. And again, with a sort of heavily laying of um, mapping over mapping over mapping. And the second in this series where I also was using the West African Dutch wax prints was this blue one from Gare du Nord, where this time it's these big star bursts. And again, in the background, I have all these little notes as to who's using the stage and, and all the information. And the big stars are drawn in a very light pencil to also try to get the idea of textile and stitch and weave. La Concorde in Paris is another site that I've worked on. Um, it's again an interesting site that in one's imagination or in tourist books this is what it appears like and a lot of people when they go uh, to Paris feel the necessity that they need to visit Place de la Concorde um, but it's quite interesting because that's more of the experience it's like eight lanes of traffic you can't see how you're supposed to get across it's either dusty too hot or it's pouring rain and you kind of hit by the elements it's a kind of a a disagreeable place to even try to spend time on and so i had the same sort of impression like i felt it was an important site that i wanted to work with and yet arriving there my kind of toolbox where i like look at signage or i watch what people do all of that kind of fell away because it feels so empty and barren um, but that was also an important point or important thing that I learned was to also let sites tell me what they're about and try to not go to a site with a preconceived conception of uh, what, how I would map it or how I would analyze it and, and allow the site to dictate that. And so uh, Place de la Concorde, I started by first uh, uh, walking on foot, as I always do, map it, map those different traffic islands, and I started to notice that it's either tourists that are photographing themselves in front of the two fountains or the obelisk, or tour buses arriving, or uh, like in the Garden Nord, there's a Sinti Roma population that are also uh, offering to squeegee uh, wash your windows or asking for money, um, or some other little sub economies. And so I decided. Um, well, as I said, first I first I mapped each tra uh, of the big islands, the traffic islands and the center core using my own body. You see always the numbers or the number of footsteps, shadows cast. That was another example the, the, of the different traffic islands. Um, all of those I then put together on a little map that I would take uh, to the Place de la Concorde on a little board and I would uh, start to follow people as they moved across the plaza because what was really interesting is people would come up out of the Tuileries Gardens, uh, move to the center, take a picture on the fountain or the obelisk and continue up the Champs d'Elysees. If they had the, the un, uh, if they were unlucky enough to think that you could travel over here and cross back, you can't. This is eight lanes of traffic. There's no way to cross so people would have to run. So I started doing these little maps of movement and flow and watching how people, yeah, traveled across space. Uh, it was also interesting, this was a moment, these kind of colors here were a group of Roma teens and a police officer arrived and I don't know what happened, but they started to chase them and the kids went running across the traffic and into the Tuileries Gardens. And I've kind of put the different colors of their raincoats there. This was an interesting moment for me in my practice because later when I would talk about this drawing, I would often talk about that moment about kids running away from cops. And I thought, 
oh, I mean, no one else has access to that story. Why don't you write that? And these were actually done before the Garden Or paintings. And that's how all of that kind of narrative storytelling really developed for the Garden Or was out of me trying to explain some of these sketches. So this is an, one of the on-site sketch. And I would go again every day and do it for about an hour. There's the time at the top, 12, 20. Uh, to 1338 and dashed lines, people running, X is somebody standing still and all these kind of movement. All of that information I then took back into the studio. I would use my projector and project it against the wall. This piece is almost two meters long and a meter 40 high, so much bigger than the body and the viewer actually has to walk in front of it uh, to get the experience. And that's the accumulation of about a week's worth of movement across the plaza. I did it again, um, and this time I was also collecting, uh, this is from 2017, uh, there had been many, many political demonstrations in France, uh, and you could sense in the different kinds of political uh, demonstrations that were happening, the polarization that was also occurring in French society. So you had huge rallies against abortion, you had counter rallies for access to abortion, you had uh, big rallies against uh, allowing the adoption of, uh, of gay couples to adopt a child, saying that a family is a mama and a papa and children. So some of those kind of slogans. Uh, you had big, uh, you had movements wanting back the, the royal family. You had big demonstrations against the um, uh, police state or the uh, state of emergency that was in Paris at the time. So I was collecting all of the signage from the different moments, layering those in the background with pencil, uh, erasing them out so you have these kind of layers of moment in time and on top of that putting the flows of people and the little moments. And I'm just going to again read some of the list of the this polarized signage that I was finding in demonstrations. Uh, this is translated from the French. Don't touch my France. Royal Alliance, we are anonymous. Equality of rights, no more or no less. Religions unite against hate. I'm a bloody feminist. Stop Tefa. Freedom for everyone. Equality with men. Homophobes. France is angry. State of emergency equals police state. All born of a man and a woman. France needs children, not homosexuals. A family equals one papa, one mama and children. I'm a lesbian and you can go fuck yourself. Equality against homophobia, abortion, my choice, my right, my freedom, take power back, it's possible. Um, I'm gonna show one image here at FIAC just so you can see the scale of the works when they're finished. And then I'm also gonna show uh, that my exhibition, I'm not gonna talk too much about the exhibition, but this was the 2016 exhibition that I did at the Canadian Cultural Centre in its former location, um, because we also included the Gare du Nord studies in this show. So this was a room downstairs, the, the, the stairway going up, also a French work dealing with Les Halles, my big model of uh, Alexanderplatz Berlin and a Taksim Square drawing. And then here in the background, you can see the uh, studies um, from Place de la Concorde. The last piece I want to speak about, or the last body of work, is based on noisy le sec in Paris, where I was invited to do a residency in the late summer, fall of 2020. Uh, and then the exhibition has just opened and is up uh, now. Uh, we are in February. Um, noisy le sec, I was super intrigued as soon as I got the invitation from the Art Centre. That's the little Art Centre surrounded by these towers, which are all kind of new build um, social housing. Uh, noisy le sec is a suburb or a banlieue of Paris that sits up in the northwest, northeast uh, corner. Uh, Saint-Denis, that whole district up at the top, is one of the poorest uh, districts or neighborhoods uh, in all of France. It is, um, it's uh, has a major la rail link to Paris that goes right through the Garde Nord. So for me, it was also this interesting connection to past works. It is uh, um, uh, definitely a neighborhood of immigration, um, majority Muslim, mostly from the Maghrebian uh, area of France, uh, of what France refers to as the Maghreb, which would be Tunisia, Moroccan, Algeria. Um, 
And so, yeah, I was intrigued to spend uh, two months living and working there. And immediately you're hit with this kind of a built environment, which is quite rude, quite strict. Uh, the, the entire city was flattened after during the Second World War by American bombing because of the major rail links heading to the east and heading to Germany. Uh, and so there was a real kind of rush and pressure. Uh, first, it was declared a dead city. Uh, and then there was this real rush and pressure to uh, provide housing and cheap, affordable housing. And um, I found it also interesting to realize that those whole that whole northern section of Paris was under um, uh, had socialist communist uh, municipalities and had a lot of links to GDR and East Germany and cultural exchange. Um, but of course, this kind of built environment is not just uh, socialist um, in, in this. It's, it's of its time with this idea of providing a cheap, clean, modern housing uh, 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 for low income uh, families. Uh, Noisy the Sec has its problems. It's, it's, a, it's um, as I said, it's one of the poorest neighborhoods or districts. And so uh, its urban fabric is quite neglected. It uh, This was the main market plaza. And I'm so used to kind of beautiful little stunning market plazas in France. And this one definitely needs some love and care and attention paid to the environment. Although that is happening in other parts. There's an, uh, there is parts of the city where there are, there is a sort of urban rejuvenation plan where uh, plants are coming in. And um, it is a, it does have a small downtown core, but that downtown core is also being kind of devastated by the big shopping mall that's 10 minutes away. And so it's very hard for any kind of little economy to even function within that within that downtown corridor. Uh, what Noisy Le Sec does have and sort of uh, contrasts that kind of harsh, uh, rigid environment was the absolute colorful, vibrant, energetic textiles that you see. I got. I was lucky to be there in August, in September. It was still really hot. Everyone was out in their colors and textiles. And so you have, um, and because it's such a mixed community, you have really textiles from everywhere. So there's a big Tamil community. You see lots of saris. Um, there's uh, West African Dutch wax prints. You see a lot of uh, geometric and uh, pattern from uh, Muslim women. You see tons of uh, Disney, Adidas, uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, Puma knockoffs. And so it, I sort of become very fascinated as uh, that text, those textile cultures as a counterpoint to the architecture I was experiencing. I decided I would, in one of the big galleries of the, of the art center, so my invitation for the residency came from uh, the art center Noisy Le Sec called La Galerie and uh, where I have an exhibition on and it's sort of three large rooms and in one room I decided I would build a miniature city almost as a theater set that the visitor would then be able to walk through and into. I kept the uh, footprint of the city so the buildings are placed in their correct uh, placement, except that I stretched them and extended them to the ceiling, um, sort of, sort of for, as a dynamic element. That's another view of how I conceived the room to be, and I focused on the buildings uh, of this crazy color palette. They're uh, pink, a dark pink, and a yellow, and those are the actual original colors of that collection of um, low-income housing that they call the PVC. Uh, the PVC towers. Um, this is in construction with my carpenter when we started to to build the actual towers. This is what I mentioned in the lower corner. You see uh, the actual color palette of the buildings that pink, cream, pink, yellow and white and that's the color palette that I then decided to paint all of my buildings and keep it true, true to life. On the inside of each building, I created my own collages based on the textiles that I was seeing in Noisy. So these aren't actually the photographs, textiles from what people were wearing, but rather inspired from what I was seeing there. So when I saw a really nice uh, West African Dutch wax print, I would then hunt online to find one similar or to find it. Um, and then I was creating my own compositions where I would combine. So this one has a more Muslim uh, feel of geometric pattern combined with the Dutch wax handshake. 
uh, oh, in the top corner, uh, you see that darker again, that's a Muslim pattern. And then below sort of the filigree, more French pattern of the this, this is all perhaps. Uh, this is how the room in the end uh, was was built. Uh, you had a choice upon entering either to go around the back sides of the building or to enter the main space. If you entered the main space, you were confronted by these flat facades in the actual color. And I quite enjoy that you still saw the screws and where the buildings lined up in the jointing because um, that housing is pretty utilitarian, built, built to be cheap and functional and is not a slick clean object. So I was actually quite happy to leave my objects also with uh, very much showing their, their construction. And on the back side of the objects, when you walked in, you have much more of that contrasting. You have the domestic, you have sort of a warmth, and you have my kind of compositions of textiles. That little sign up there is from uh, Berber tattoos that I saw on the women in Wazil Sek, who have the a woman in her 70s who has the full uh, facial tattoos, West African prints. Um, then you could move around the center and people from Nawazi would probably be able to identify the different buildings, at least by their placement. And again, here's another view of this sort of stage set city. And here again, details from my collage composition of textiles where you see um, different horses, West African Dutch wax print, Louis Vuitton. Um, you also have uh, the stars from West African Dutch wax uh, and the hands again. And here the filigree from more uh, French patterns and then the logos that I saw tons of the teams wearing, the Fly Emirates, the Levi, the Adidas. And the last piece I, I want to finish on was a painting that you saw on the outside of this room. It's the painting from the Gardenor series. And what I was really excited about for the Noisy audience is that as I had done earlier, I had read you those notes of what, what you can find in the Gardenor paintings. But because my paintings, I wrote my notes in English and that would be rather challenging for an audience from Noisy. I was trying to create accessible, interesting translations of the paintings. And I decided that for this work, I was going to build a, that's the cat. I was going to build a soundscape and allow the viewer to have a different kind of reading of my notes. So uh, to finish the talk, um, I'm going to play that soundscape with this painting. And I particularly want to thank at this point, um, Katrine Badar and the CCC, because um, they actually made this new work possible. So thank you very much, and I will leave you with this piece. Quai Métro 5, 17h10. Annonce. Une femme tient la porte du train ouverte pour les autres passagers. Un train arrive, une fille rit, carreau orange, chaise en plastique bleu. Train dans trois minutes, le prochain Un homme vend des jouets. Le train arrive, valise, parapluie, des, foulards, des freins, une guitare. Annonce. Vélo. J'essaye d'être discrète pour passer inaperçu. Un groupe d'hommes, un homme court, habillé en entièrement en vert, soigneusement habillé en sari et d'autres vêtements. Beaucoup de monde sur le quai. Beaucoup de valises. Musique. Alarme. Beaucoup de parapluies noirs. Les portes du train s'ouvrent. Un homme à côté de moi au téléphone. Le son d'une boîte à rythme se propage. Une femme noire à ma gauche lit une lettre, un stylo à la main. Des applaudissements et des voix féminines et masculines rap. Un garçon blanc sur sa trottinette baille. Une valise bleue. Une mère et sa fille portent toutes les deux des bandeaux roses à poids blanc. Carrelage blanc, tache d'eau. Une fille blonde au téléphone. Annonce. Écouteur. T-shirt jaune. Rush of people. Signalement des portes qui se ferment. Un très grand adolescent au milieu d'un groupe d'adolescents. Annonce. Je fais mine d'attendre quelqu'un en regardant ma montre pour passer inaperçu. Un homme endormi dans le train contre la fenêtre. Je me sens paranoïaque. Une mère asiatique et sa fille portent des lunettes. Une femme parle très fort. La femme à côté de moi continue de me dévisager. Cela me rend nerveux. Un chapeau rouge. De nombreuses valises. Je fais semblant de regarder à nouveau ma montre. Sacro, Zari indien, poussette bébé. 8. Pantalon de noir, 
Noir, Cette blanc, blanc, vêtement asiatique, rouge, noir, couleur d'Europe, asiatique, maghrébin, blanc, jaune, orange, blanc, 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 homme en habit traditionnel, or, blanc, or, blanc deux, orange, blanc, or, blanc, or, blanc, noir, jaune, noir, six, noir, six, maghrébin, maghrébin, noir, blanc, deux, noir, blanc, blanc, noir, blanc,